Good morning. I'm Dr. Jacqueline McCain, and I will be the moderator for this class. Today is Wednesday, September the 20th, 2023. You have been muted. <clears throat> Please continue to monitor your mute buttons. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a non profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kimley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, and Zambia, with students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach by the true, correct, and the original name and title of the Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifests in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. And Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means Elohim is the title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. There are four such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. 
We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision, and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world erroneously calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple, Yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title Elohim may be had by reading the preference of a holy name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now the pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary aims and objectives are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. 
and 10th is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. I watch where it is, peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. We'd like to begin today's class with a prayer by Dr. Lawanda Decker. Our song will be given by Dr. Lenore Allen. And our scripture reading today would be Hosea, the fourth chapter, and also Jeremiah 3, 14 through 15, read by Dr. Lucy Altman. Dr. Decker. Good morning, everyone. Let us come humbly before Yahshua, because he don't have to show us anything. And ask him to let us be humble and let us to learn our lessons peacefully. He knows that we cry, but he's getting us ready to move. He's getting us ready to go live in a new house, in a new place, in a new way. And we've got to be ready to be good citizens of that new place. It's not always easy and we don't always like it. But we ask him to keep us, to keep our heart and our mind in the right place. Let our lips be slow to move and let our ears be ready to listen and let us be obedient. With that, I'll say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, um, I wanted to share something that I took from um, Annie, get your gun. <laughs> There's no gospel like Yah's gospel, like no gospel I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything Yeshua will allow. No one can you get that happy feeling. So to the ceiling, you're learning now. There's no spirit like the Holy Spirit. He knows what you need to know. Did you ever think that you would live to see the Holy Spirit revealed in thee? And to know for sure there is, he is a unity. There's lots more you can know. The spirit, shoot, the spirit makes you grow. No headaches, no heartaches, no wax dripping down. No more eternal searching for the door. No kneeling, no bowing, no chanting around. No more physical acts your soul abhors. No more supreme depression cause you found that Yahshua and you makes you have it bound. There's no gospel like Yah's gospel, like no gospel I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything Yahshua will allow. No way can you get that happy feeling. So to the ceiling, you're learning now. There's no spirit like the Holy Spirit. He knows what you need to know. Did you ever think that you would live to see the Holy Spirit revealed in thee? And to know for sure he is in unity. There's lots more you can know. The Spirit makes you grow. As Peter, as Mary, as Lazarus too. His name is Yahshua, a name you can prove. As Moses, as Aaron, as your minister too. His mission is salvation just for you. He keeps repeating, he came to fulfill. Now let us learn of him and do his will. There's no gospel like Yah's gospel, like no gospel I know. Everything about it is appealing. 
Everything that you will, will allow. Now we can do some high kicks. No way can you get that happy feeling. Shot to the ceiling. You're learning now. There's no spirit like the Holy Spirit. He knows what you need to know. Did you ever think that you would live to see the Holy Spirit revealed in thee? And to know for sure he is a unity. There's lots more you can know. The Spirit makes you grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Seemed like an abrupt ending. Hallelujah. I praise Joshua for the Broadway song. Yep. <laughs> I will be reading our scripture lesson this morning, which is Hosea, the fourth chapter, and Jeremiah, the third chapter, verses 14 and 15. Hosea 4, hear the word of Yahweh, ye children of Israel, for Yahweh has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Elohim in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out, and bloodshed touches bloodshed. Therefore shall the land mourn. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive, nor reproof another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore, ye priests, shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. Thy people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. They changed my glory into shameful worship. They eat up the sin offering of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed to Yahweh. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stops, and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms has caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their Elohim. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains, and burn incense upon the hills, under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery, for themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore the people that will not discern shall be punished. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend, and come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, and swear, Yahweh liveth. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer, when Yahweh would feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. Their drinking has come to an end. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers do love shameful worship. The wind has bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. That was Hosea, the fourth chapter, read from the Holy Bible. And Jeremiah 3 and verse 14. Turn, O backsliding Israel, saith Yahweh, for I am married unto you. 
and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That was Jeremiah, the third chapter, the 14th and 15th verses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Pratt, are you available to read with us today? Okay, our readers today will be uh, Lucy Altman and uh, myself, unless someone else wants to volunteer and read with Lucy. I, I want to know, do we have any um, brand new people with us today? Yes, ma'am. Sherry Russell, I'm here. I was here yesterday, but I got off kind of early. Praise you. Oh, Sherry. Welcome, Here. Sherry. It's a it's an honor and a pleasure to see you once more. Thank so you. I guess, I guess we should um, let some of the we should let some of the ministers share their share the gospel with them. Uh, can we please hear from? Can our first speaker please be? Dr. Sybil Lewis from Nassau, Bahamas. Good morning, brethren. Good morning. Good morning. And, and welcome to a returning visitor. I'm thankful. I don't know if you are affiliated with any a particular religious organization, but, but I, I would like to say, or my te personal testimony is that I have come from, or I do have a religious background of being a Seventh-day Adventist and also a member of the Assemblies of Yahweh, which teach that in this dispensational age of grace, mm -hmm. that we are to keep the carnal ordinances. And if you would get that carnal ordinance chart or the two covenants chart for me, please. And they teach that these carnal ordinances, such as baptism, circum well, some say circumcision, some do that, not all, but baptism, feast days, which Yahweh had seven feast days that he gave to Israel. Um, and uh, they also uh, teach that you should observe or practice the Ten Commandment law, which was given to Israel, and so and others tithing. And you will see um, if that chart is up, you will see that there is a scroll with all these things that I'm mentioning, ceremonies and all these things that I'm mentioning are on that scroll. But what we would like to tell you that all these carnal ordinances, mm -hmm. which were not given to us, but was given to Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel who came from Jacob, they were given to them to keep in that uh, age and dispensation, not in this age and dispensation. We have an age and dispensational chart, which um, perhaps the next speaker would go through, but we, it was not given to us. In other words, we now cannot 
worship Yahweh by keeping any of those carnal ordinance. Why is that so? Because the one that you perhaps call Jesus Christ, whose name is not Jesus Christ, it's Yahshua Messiah, mm -hmm. he came in to fulfill the scriptures. Matthew 5, 17 and 18, please read. Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For now, verily, who's I say, excuse me, go ahead. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one yacht or the smallest part of the letter shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Thank you. Now who's speaking here? This is Yahshua Messiah. When he came in the, the flesh, he took on a physical body in the likeness of sinful flesh mm -hmm. to fulfill the scriptures. In other words, the scriptures, which are the law, and the prophets, which is Isaiah 8 and 20, says to the law and to the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, when it says this word, it is speaking about Yahweh Elohim. He, so says John 1 and 1. If you will read that for me, please. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same now, was... The... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. Sorry. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Thank you. So the word... Uh, that the scripture mentions there in John, and this is the John who was a disciple of Yahshua and later became an apostle. And he also is the same John who wrote uh, the book of Revelation. In fact, he wrote five books. But John is saying here that the word is truly, and we know by divine vision, because this is a vision and revelation that is being taught at these schools, and also the witness of this Bible, the scripture is in that, we read in that Bible, eight, Isaiah 8 and 20. But John is saying that the word is not your Bible, but in fact, the word, the true word of Yahweh is Yahweh Elohim. And um, I would like to go to that uh, Moses chart, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I, I'm really. The my Moses reading. chart is up. Okay. You'll see on that chart where that fiery colored cloud, which represents Yahweh, all right, and um, whoever, uh, Dr. Allen, you can use your cursor and show where I'm speaking. Um, Yahweh has three states of existence. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, which is represented by that fiery colored cloud. Then we have Yahweh who takes on a shape and form, which is Yahweh Elohim. Now he is the word or son. And it is this self-same word that took on a physical body that John is talking about that came on down in the form of Yahshua Messiah 
that self-same word, see, he is the one that is speaking through John that is letting us know that he is the word or son. Mm -hmm. Now, where I was in Matthew 5, 17 and 18, Yahshua is saying that he, that is the Holy Spirit speaking. He's saying, I came not to set up a Christian example or to institute, because he already did that. Mm -hmm. You see, but he said he came in to fulfill. Now, what does fulfill mean? To uh, well, um, I just say that fulfill means to complete. It means to finish. To bring to and mind. also it means to bring into a spiritual reality. Um, you right. can examine your uh, dictionary, but we, we don't have time for that. Uh, at least I'm trying to. Mm. Anyway, that's what it, sorry. So you got a new person. Okay. Well, I'm going to let someone else go on and finish because my breath is, is kind of short here. I'm having an incident here. Um, Dr. Allen, would you call the next speaker and let them continue, please? I'm having a situation here. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lewis. Can we please hear from Dr. McCain? Good morning, brethren. Uh, I was telling Sybil she was doing well, so I'm gonna try to pick up where she left off. I understand when you get out of breath. I get out of breath and call my name because Father knows. I'm hoping Yahweh will bring to my remembrance so we can uh, let this soul know that uh, <clears throat> what we come into this school is by the result of a divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. I'm going to come back to the cardinal ordinances. I just want to give a, a brief introduction uh, so you won't think that some anybody set up this school. This school was set up by a man. His name was Henry Clifford Kinley. And he claimed to have a divine vision and a divine revelation direct from the creator himself. And he has a pamphlet out we use called the vision pamphlet. And in this vision pamphlet, he tells how Yahweh spoke to him and showed him all these things and how we were just ignorantly worshiping our creator. The reason why we were ignorantly worshiping our creator, keep the chart up and, and Lucy, get for me Revelations 12 and 7, King James, uh, holy name is 12 and 8, uh, where we want to talk about how this deception came by and how we were all deceived and how we all did not know who our savior were, but we were going about to worship a Lord and a God and a Jesus in the way some man has set up. That wasn't by Yahweh. That was the man's wisdom. So the reason why we didn't know what we uh, what we know now is because of this. Uh, read, uh, Lucy. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And that great serpent was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, can I get you to stop right there? Did you hear what he said? He said he was he was in heaven, and we can go over in Ezekiel and show you how he was that anointed cherub that covered. And Yahweh set him up that way. And it says, till iniquity was found in thee. Not that he didn't have iniquity before. It's just that he didn't show it. You know how people uh, uh, front off like they so kind. And just then once you get to know him, you see the real self. So till iniquity was found in him. So he deceiveth. And it's deceiveth means past, present, and future. He's still deceiving the whole world 
And the whole world, we were in that world. We all came through the loins of a, a female and we all came in deceived because Satan deceived the whole world. So that's why Yahweh in our day and time, so we can read back there in Moses' time, and we can read in Ezekiel's time, and we can read in Saul and Peter and Paul's time, where it's our time now. That same gospel that they was preaching from Genesis to Revelation is the self-same gospel we're preaching now. We're preaching it according to Yahweh's wisdom, not man's wisdom, because man will have you thinking you got to do something to be saved, and there is no works. We're in the age of grace, and grace is an unmerited favor. So therefore, we was born in under all these corner ordinances that Dr. Sybil was talking about. See, we was born in with the circumcision and the ceremonies and stuff like that. But if you read, I think it's um, Romans 2 and 14, where it says, where the Gentiles, which had not the law, is that it? Yes, Romans 2 and 14. Romans 2 and 14. <clears throat> mm -hmm. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature these things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So you see, we never had this law. This law that you see on your chart, this law was only given to the Jews and the Jews only. But remember, I told you, Satan was cast out of heaven to deceive the whole world. So he's in the world, deceiving the world and telling you, you got to keep a law here in our day and time. And no, no, no. Your savior came in like she was uh, she was telling you they had to do all these things. But when your savior came in, which is Joshua, not Jesus. And the reason why it can't be Jesus is because. There, that letter J is a hook and it has hooked the world. And there is no J in the Hebrew, Greek, or Latin language. You see that little inscription over the cross? It says I N R I. So we know the I and the J was interchangeable in our time. See, the letter J didn't come about until uh, the 1500s, the 1500s, 1500, 1600s, yeah. So it's been, uh, the letter J came about, there was no J in the Hebrew, which he was a Hebrew, the Greek or the Latin languages. So you see, it was impossible, impossible for that name to be Jesus. So see, we had to come down here and we had to get rid of Jesus. And like she was saying, she was uh, raised in the uh, uh Jehovah's Witness and the uh, other, I have to get the other one, she said, but I was raised in the Baptist. So we all came from something. We read a lecture last week where Dr. Kinley said everybody was influenced by something from that satanic spirit. So everybody is. So that's why you're in the right place to be. You come to the place where you can obtain salvation now. That's what I aim to so say. You can inherit it now in the kingdom because the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. See, in the Holy Spirit. See, it's nothing physical you can do now. He nailed all that to the cross. We can get over there in Colossians uh, where it says, uh, they got on the chart 2, 10 through 15. And we can get uh, Psalms 40 and 6. And uh, let's get those two just to show you, to show them that, see, we was, we was deceived to accept these sacrifices. And that's what the churches are teaching. See, that's why you see a cross on every church, because they're dead. See, and Yahshua, when he died on that cross, he removed all of that. Uh, we're going to get those scriptures. And then I'm going to jump to Matthew 5 and 17, right? Like he said, he came in to fulfill everything that you see on this chart. He came in to fulfill it, nailed it to the cross and took it out of the way. And now the new kingdom is written in your heart and in your mind. So it's with the knowledge 
of Yahshua, that you are being transformed into that kingdom that he has and coming in here and learning the truth the way Yahweh set it up, not man's wisdom, because you see what man's wisdom has done. Man wisdom is destroying the world. See, that's Satan's kingdom. See, and he's he's destroying the world, but Yahshua said he was going to destroy it by fire. See, what you see going on now is leading up to the end. Everything in the scriptures is talking about how in the end it's going to be perilous times and men are going to be lovers of their own selves and you're going to have doctrines of demons and all this. This is what's going on now. This is in your Bible that's telling you these things. So I'm going to let I'm going to be quiet for a minute and let her read those scriptures, show you how he nailed all these corner ordinances that uh, Sybil was talking about. He nailed it to his cross and took it out of the way because we didn't have it in the first place. We just read that in Romans. But read on. Colossians 2. And uh, can I start with verse 8? Go ahead. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the Messiah. Do you hear that? Yes. Beware. Beware. He's warning us. Beware lest men spoil you. Come on, Lucy. Beware lest men spoil you through... Through philosophy and vain deceit, <laughs> after the tradition of men. Yes after the rudiments of the world yep. and not after the Messiah. Telling you, you got to serve Christmas and you got to do Easter. See, that's the rudiments of the world. And telling you, you got to keep the Lord's Supper and ain't no such thing as Lord's Supper because ain't no Lord. Lord is, I went to England. There's a house of Lords. And you know what? Every Lord in that house had a name. It was Lord Baltimore. Lord Chesterfield, Lord Sterling, it was a whole list of lords, and every one of those lords have a name. First Corinthians 8 and 5, like we say in the moderation, there be lords many and gods many, but we now know, see, we're coming into this school under this divine vision that was given to our founder, we now know that it's only one name. And that's Yahshua, Yahweh. And Yahshua only means Yahweh is salvation. See, it ain't two names. It's still one name. See, and Elohim is a title that we said, how he is the one that speaks to men in a vision, a dream, because she was talking about the word. So, so we can go back if, if um, the readers can go and help me find how the word came unto this one and that one. So you can see the word is not your Bible. Your Bible wasn't floating around to nobody and saying, oh, Jeremiah, you know, no, no, sir, no, ma'am. So, see, we understand now what the word is. If you can get the Moses chart right quick, and I'll come back to the court and ordinances, because I got a lot hanging out there, don't I? Ezekiel see how 28 and 1, the word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying. Okay, the word came to Ezekiel. Was it the Bible? No. Go ahead. Read another one. Jeremiah 2 and 1, moreover, uh -huh. the word of Yahweh came un, came to me saying, unto Jeremiah and Ezekiel. You see, they carry the name of Yahweh Elohim. See, we didn't know these things. And it's okay because all of us was ignorant. All of us came in not knowing. But see, the grace and the mercy is Yahweh let you come in to sit down and hear it and to listen and hopefully he'll spark a flame in you to make you want to come in and learn more about your creator. Not as the world, like she just read over there, not like the world give it. See, not the tradition of men and the rudiments of the world. See, but after the Messiah, that's where you come in here for, to come and learn about how the Messiah want us to know. You ain't gonna find it nowhere else. But in a school that's under the divine vision and revelation of Yahshua, see, that's just it. And people say, oh, that's just, you can go. No, no, no. He said there was only one way. He's, uh, I think that's John. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I am the ways, the truths, and the lies. Lies. It's only one. See, and we don't want to put no twist on it. We want to let it be just like he is. He is the way. 
So we come into this school by this great divine vision that was given to us and he's showing us. So did I get all the ones on the cardinal ordinances chart that we was talking about? Because I did sidetrack a minute. You have this part of that down here. Okay, so you know, you see that word of son, that's Elohim. See, that's Yahweh's pure spirit. He's incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. We cannot see, taste, touch, smell, feel, or hear spirit. But for the love of us, he know that man could not, could not understand him in this pure spirit state. He took on shape and form right within himself. You see how they got that orange and fiery cloud? And then you got Elohim, that Eloistic figure that Moses is seeing in a vision. See, that, 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 uh, that form is Elohim. That's the word of son. That's what came unto, she was reading over there in Ezekiel and Jeremiah. That's the word that came unto them and said. See, now I hope that was understood and clear. So I'm going to move on because that's, that's right there. It's a powerful thing to understand how Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim, and that same Elohim, you see down there at the bottom, he's the one that came in and died on the cross. That's when she got over there in John 1 and 1. See, in the beginning was the word. See, that's Yahweh Elohim. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, that, that word was down there with Joshua, I mean, with Moses. See, he was back there setting it up with Moses. See, y'all thought, it was Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. No, it was Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. Remember, no J, no Joshua, no Jerusalem. Jerusalem was Jerusalem. You look up those J's in there in the Bible, in your dictionary, and you see they all started originally with a Y because we deal with etymology. See, etymology is the root or the beginning of where the, all these words came from because man has put a twist on it and put their own definition in it. So we go back and try to get the etymology of the words to find out the origin of where it came from. Okay, read on, wherever we're reading. Colossians 2 and 9. Okay. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. You hear that? In him dwelleth all the fullness. See, he's the word made flesh. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yah. And you know something? I'm going to give a brief little testimony right quick. See, that's that, that John 1 and 1. When I was a little girl, I wanted to know God. I just wanted to know God because they was telling me about the hell fires and stuff. And so every program, I would get up and recite John 1, 1 through 14. And I didn't know as a little girl what I was reading because I said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You see what I'm saying? I didn't understand, but I came down to this school and it, I tell you, it was an eye-opening experience, something that you said all your life to come into an understanding of what it truly means. So we know now that the word, a son, is Elohim, and he came unto the prophets. And we can read in Second Peter where he said, holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. See, people will say, oh, the Bible was written by this one, and the Bible was written by that one. I said, uh-uh. Yahweh said in your Bible, that holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we got a lot of different versions of the Bible, but you know something, you got a creator that loves you and he's going to let you know the truth. So he's going, that's why we got this school here to correct us in the things that we need to know. Okay, so we know that he was the word. So let's go back to the corner ordinances chart. I think I picked up where Sybil was. I hope I got some of the things that she touched on. And we'll go back to the corner ordinances and I'm going to have my seat and let someone else take over. And then we'll talk about uh, how Yahweh set this thing up. Okay, so he said he nailed it to the cross. So if he nailed it to the cross, that means we don't do it no more. He brought it to an end. He closed it. What does Psalms 46 and 8 say? Psalms 46. 48. Psalms 46, verse 8. Come behold the works of Yahweh, what desolations he has made in the world, in the earth. 46. 
Okay, I'm sorry. That's 46 and 8. 46 and 8. Psalms 40 and 6? Yes. Offering thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. Hast thou pierced. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Wow. said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Did you hear that? He said sacrifice and all. He didn't desire that, but he had to do something because he knew that they was going to be disobedient. That's why he told us in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, that these are our examples. So we won't lust like they did trying to gain their own prosperity. That's what they're teaching in the world. But see, we come in here to learn about Yahshua to gain eternal life. It is so wonderful. It is just wonderful. So you see, he is sacrificing all for he did not, is that, but a body, see, which was Yahshua. And that's why he's written in the law and the prophets. See, he came in the volume of the book. See, it's written about him. It ain't written about us. It ain't for us. It's written about him. Let's get some more witness of how this book is written about him. And that's why we need to come down here and learn because we didn't know. I ask people all the time, what do you know about God? They can't tell me nothing because they don't know nothing. And then they get mad because you ask them a question like that and want to get mad and don't want to talk to you no more. But that's OK. I know they got to do it because, see, this this gospel that we preach, it ain't nothing like anything you have ever heard in your life. But it is a gift from Yahweh. See, it ain't nothing like the world teaches. Okay, so um, where am I going now? Um, so the corn ordinances have been fulfilled and nailed to the cross, as you see. And Yahshua, he triumphed over them and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, which is yeah, first to the Jews. And then uh, later to the Gentiles, see, he gave it, uh, on, on, uh, if you go to Acts, the second chapter, you see, see, that's what I keep trying to tell people. I said, now the Savior said while he was walking around, I'm going to quote right quick. Savior said when he was walking around, Mark 8 and 31, 9 and 1, that he has to die. He has to be buried, but he will rise again the third day. Now, that's what he preached to his disciples over and over and over and over again while he walked the earth plane. So when he goes through this terrific death on the cross and how they beat him and scourged him, he did that for us so we can come in and learn about him. We don't want to scoot it up under the rug and say, oh, no, I got to do it better. No, ain't nothing you can do better but to learn of your Savior right now. See, because that's going to be eternal life. And that's what's going to give you a hope for immortal glorification. We ain't like the world. I know we say no son, no ma'am. We have a hope of immortal glorification. Now we're in the kingdom now, being in Yahshua the Messiah. See, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Because see, after this state that we're in, in this flesh, it's going. You have a soul within you. You're made up of spirit soul and body. Why? Because you have Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. So we're one, spirit, soul, and body. See, and he's coming to save our souls. That's why he died on the cross. That's why he moved all that out of the way. Because see, they couldn't keep that law. That's why they had sacrificed that boy, I tell you, that tabernacle. The tabernacle that he gave Moses in the wilderness, see, that was their way out. If they do all of Yahweh's statutes and judgments, and look, and it was 613. It wasn't just 10. It was 613. But Yahweh gave them a way out by this tabernacle and making high priests so they can take us innocent lamb or an innocent sacrifice to take away their sins. Where well, Yahshua, he's that innocent sacrifice for the world. See, you go and read, Pilate couldn't find no fault in him. You know, he didn't have no fault in him because what? He is the savior of the world to take away the sins of the world. So see, he's that sacrifice, that ultimate sacrifice for the whole world. But the world don't want to hear it because they are, they are uh, deceived. And Satan has, what's that scripture that say Satan has blinded the minds of them? 
Could y'all find that for me? So he has deceived the whole world. So they thinking they right, and they won't even take the time to hear. But everybody don't have the unction to want to come in and listen. Because when you tell somebody they wrong, they get mad. Listen, everybody was wrong. Get over it. You know, that's what I had to say to myself. You know, everybody was wrong. We have to come in here and sit down and erase all that crap that we ever thought about our creator. We have to have it all erased. Come in here and learn. And look, the stuff that you learn in here can be proven beyond a doubt. Everything can be proven to you. Now, I might not be able to prove everything, but the little bit I do know, I can prove it to you. You see what I'm saying? So you find that scripture. Second Corinthians 4. Let's start and, it. Uh, 4 and 1. Um, mm -hmm. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We don't but claim. Renounce. Lucy, I'm going to be stopping you, baby. Okay, so he said, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received what? Mercy. I told you we're in the age of grace. See, it's by his mercy that he allow you to hear. And if he allow you to hear and receive it, we're going to shout all together, hallelujah, praise Joshua. And if he don't, we're going to still shout hallelujah because Yahweh said it ain't for the world. But hopefully... You are one of his sons that he has called in at the last day to come in and hear this truth and to receive it and to love it and to come in and want to know more and more and more. Go read on. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, uh -huh. not walking in craftiness, uh -huh. nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, uh -huh. but by manifestation of the truth, Commending yes. ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Yahweh Elohim. Yes. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Mm -hmm. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see, that's why they're lost. Because the God of this world, Lucifer, say, remember he was cast out into this earth plane. So he's the God of this world. But Yahweh got power over him, okay? Because he created him. He created him to do what he is doing, and he's a good devil, okay? He's doing everything he was set up to do, and that was to deceive the world and to keep you from not knowing the truth. And you know, the main thing he did to keep you from not knowing the truth is take away the name. He took that name out of the Bible. See, people say, oh, those scholars, they yell. Yeah, it was something in those scholars that caused them to take that name out. You see what I'm saying? So he, I tell you, we serve a living Elohim. And I'm so grateful that he brought us in. But read on. He said that in, uh, he has blinded the mind of them. Uh, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them as lost. Because it's not hid. It's out here. You see the sun rise every morning and it sets in the evening. So you got, uh, uh, you got it goes down in the evening and the death. Is buried in the horizon, but early the next morning, it resurrects. You know what that's doing? That's preaching the gospel of Yahshua Messiah, how he died, he was buried, and he resurrected. You know what? You go to bed every night. You're in a room, or you're inundated in a house, and you go to sleep, and sleep is synonymous to death, so you just as good as dead, and you're buried in that cover, or you're in that room, and then early the next morning, you resurrect. Hallelujah. See, you're going through a death, a burial, a resurrection. When Moses then was out there in the wilderness, see, they had to take out a lamb and they had to hold that lamb over for four days and they had to have that lamb in them. See, that lamb had to die, be buried in them. And guess what? They resurrected into the wilderness to praise and honor Yahweh. And that's when Yahweh spoke down Mount Sinai. They say the Ten Commandments. But we know that it was... Uh, uh, it was 613 laws, statutes, and judgment. Go back and read in your Bible, in Deuteronomy. He tells you about all these laws and stuff that they had to do. So see, Yahweh got this set up. This is his purpose, and he's doing his pleasure. And all we have to do is come in here, sit down, and let Yahweh show you. I ain't saying no man, and I'm hoping you ain't thinking Jackie's saying anything, because I'm hoping it's the spirit in me that's showing you how important 
this truth is and that we all need to know. We need to come in, sit down and get ourselves something to learn according to the scriptures, not tradition, not the ways and means committee. See, but according to the way Yahweh has purposed it, see, no more Christmas, Christmas, I, ain't no Christ, ain't no Christmas, okay? So uh, that's something made up because they say he was born in December. We can show you in Luke where he was born June the 6th. It says he conceived in September. How many months from September? Nine months for a baby to be born, right? So if she conceived in September and born in December, That's a, that, that baby is not, not fully developed. See, we found out John the Baptist was born in December. We can prove all this stuff. So you just have to come down here and learn. So we welcome you. And hopefully Yahweh will show you something and make you come back and hear more. And to, that he will cause you to receive this truth and put you in his kingdom. And you'll be just like us, just as happy as I'm so happy. I can't stand myself. You see what I'm saying? Because he has given me something that, that outshines the world. The world ain't got nothing compared to what we give you here. This is the truth. So uh, so we know that if you're if our gospel is here, it's here to them who is lost. Read four, and then I'm going to be done. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds which, of them which believe not, lest mm -hmm. the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should mm -hmm. shine unto them. Mm -hmm. See, this light, this is light. <laughs> what we're talking about is light. And what it does is it, it, it just creates your darkness, stuff that you didn't know. You called him God. Now you see, oh, no, God is a title. I can't call him God no more. He got a name. You see how that light came in and took you out of that darkness? Just that quick. See, he said you can be saved sitting right here in your seat. See, just by knowing his name, you are out of darkness. So you was in darkness calling Jesus. See, ain't no such thing as Jesus. That's man-made from Greek, Babylonian, Hindu, Lezus Christos. See, three different gods. That's where they got their trinity from because they got Jesus from three different gods. Lezus Christos. Okay? <laughs> so I tell you, this truth, it, it would change your life. Now, people ain't going to like you because you tell the truth because men, like they say, they rather love darkness than light. See, they, they rather stay in that darkness. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. And don't be, don't be, don't be discouraged because they don't want to hear what you try to say. Because I know you're going to be just like we were when we first came in. When we heard this truth, we wanted everybody to know it. We wanted everybody to hear what we were hearing. But everybody ain't going to want to hear. So don't be discouraged because they don't want to hear. You keep coming. Because see, it's an individual thing. It ain't a group thing. It's an individual thing. He's saving souls. See, he ain't selling, saving groups. He's saving souls. And everyone has one. And thankful to Yahweh that he brought you in and showed you a little bit. And I hope my testimony will encourage you to keep coming and to keep wanting to learn more and more and more and more and more. And I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to give somebody else the opportunity to give a testimony. And I hope that Yahweh will bless you with an understanding. Hallelujah. 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 Um, I'd like to be the next speaker, I'm Lenore Allen from Brooklyn, and I would like to talk a little bit about circumcision. But can we read again um, 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and then um, read it down to 6, please. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but the Messiah, Yahshua the Savior, and ourselves your servants for Yahshua's sake. For Yahweh, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. All right, so I just wanted to pick out this part here 
where it talks about for Yahweh who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. When you read in the first part of the Bible, it talks about, you know, and, and he said this and he said that and it came to light. And he called out, he called out the light to shine and it did shine, but he has called the light to shine in our hearts. That's giving you an example that there is a circumcision. What is a circumcision? It's a cutting away of the unneeded flesh in order to show forth the head. That, that's done through the man. When it's done through the woman physically, that's just, um, that's just obliterating somebody's um, able to have joy in intercourse. But we want you to have joy in intercourse. There's physical inter intercourse, which is pleasurable, but there's also spiritual intercourse, which is very pleasurable. Now it says, for Yahweh, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge or the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. So now we want to have that darkness that was in our heart but by a circumcision of the heart is going to cause you to have the light of knowledge, which she was talking about, it gives you great joy, great understanding, great um, peace. I mean, we see Yahweh set it up that Yahweh has destroyed the, the world before. He destroyed it at the time of Noah, but he allowed a way of escape what was the way of escape? He made, he made an ark. Okay. Come on, baby. Oh, he made an ark. And that, that, that was the way of escape. Now he says he took it out by water and the people felt, well, if he ever tries to take it out by water, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to build myself a big tower. So that's what they did back here. They built this giant tower thinking about, ha ha, the next time he, you know, they didn't trust him. And that's what Yahweh wants. He wants us to know him. And by knowing him, you'll trust him. And when you trust him, you'll believe him. Now, what you had happen all the way back here was that this huge tower was built because they thought when the hard times come, we'll run to the top of the tower. Now they weren't thinking that Yahweh, kind of, Yahweh covered up the mountains. He knew how to send forth a storm. And then you also got to understand that when you read it, it talks about the foundations of the deep broke up. That means that these aquifers or these, these tunnels down here with water, they burst forward through through the um ground and water was coming up from the bottom now if you're going to have a huge storm what building are you going to build that's going to be able to avoid a sinkhole yahweh just destroyed the whole thing so they weren't thinking very well but the point that i just wanted to talk about is circumcision and i wanted to go back to Hosea, the fourth chapter, and I wanted us to read the beginning of it because there's something very important that would be worthwhile for us to know. And when we come to this class, it's to learn something. The man had a, a divine vision and a revelation, and he said, when he had the vision and he had the, the, the revelation, he said, I want to show you something. Um, he also said that he wasn't going to charge any money because this was priceless. And he said, let me prove it to you out of the scriptures. And what I have found is the same Bible that we had in our house all this time. After we came to class, the Bible did not read the same. Now, Dr. Kinley had great knowledge, great understanding. He it was like he had chewed up and eaten the Bible. He knew it inside and out. You could call one scripture and he'd be able to tell you the scriptures all around it. He was very knowledgeable of the Bible. But he said after he received this vision and revelation on June the 6th, he said at 9 o'clock in the morning, he said the Bible did not read the same. He came to an understanding. Who gave him the understanding? The one that wrote it. 
Now you can think about when you were in English class, you know, you had to read certain books and you had to try to find out well, what's the theme, what's the theme. And I bet sometimes some of these authors, you know, if they could see these college papers and high school papers, it's like, no, that's not what I, <laughs> that's not what I, that's not the point that I was trying to get across at all. And, you know, you can still pass and get your master's and your doctorate and everything by saying what you think of what it means, catcher in the rye, what it means. And somebody might look at it, the author might look at it and say, no, that's not what it means, but okay, you got your degree. Well, we're talking about the source, the substance, the limits, the bounds, the very source, Yahweh himself made a creation for us to know him. And in his creation, he wants us to be knowledgeable of him. So can we read Hosea 4 and 6? Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also will reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, thing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. So Yahweh took a certain people aside. They were the Jews. They were of the people of Abraham. He took them aside and he was going to talk to them and instruct them and to make them as the light of the world. Not for them to say, hey, look at me, I'm a light. But that when Yahshua went through a death, a burial and a resurrection, that when he did that, the people would have to go to the Jews. They were the ones who had the books. They were the ones who had the knowledge and the experience. They were the ones that they were going to have to go to in order to explain what Yahweh did and how, how what he did when he came in to fulfill. Now, I want to also get Jeremiah 3 and 15. Jeremiah 3 and 15. Oh, the 14, and I, please. 14, please. 14 and 15. Turn, O backsliding children, saith Yahweh, for I am married unto you. So he's talking to Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. And one of the things that we learn in the school is that those names are significant. And Jeremiah, it has a name in it. Um, Ezekiel, it has his divine title in it. And you'll see when these people come, they're coming in the name of Yahweh. Even Malachi means my messenger. And he's talking about Yahweh, so he couldn't be anybody else's messenger. But uh, so could you start reading for 14 again? Jeremiah 3, 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith Yahweh, for I am married unto you. So he says he's married unto them. How is that possible? Well, Back here, uh, when he brought the, the children out of Egypt and they had been evilly and treated and roughly treated down here, I mean, they were killing their babies. I mean, that's, that's pretty bad. You can give an idea, idea, idea of it, the fact that when people were coming through our borders and they were taking their children away from them, and they feel, you know, I saw... So somebody um, on the television is like, well, when you commit a crime, we take you away from your children. And the lady is saying, well, they're not committing a crime. They, they're, you know, they're coming for help. And it's like, well, they came through the wrong door. You know, you don't come through this door. Uh, too bad. We're going to take your kids away. And some of those kids are still gone. But anyway, so when they came up through the divided waters of the Red Sea, Yahweh took care of them. And then he gave his commandments down here we um, in Exodus the 20th chapter we call it the Ten Commandments but Yahweh gave them even more than six, 16 and 13 ordinances and they said everything that you have said we will do and we will be obedient and and so that was the marriage there he married he says I married unto you that he married them there now you see the whole purpose of Yahweh comes down to the fact that they, when they were set free here in Egypt, all the time when Yahweh is speaking through Moses to the children of Israel and to Pharaoh, he's saying, I want them to come here and worship me. And you may think, why should I worship you? Who are you? Well, as you come 
to this school and you come to an understanding, you will find that he is the fullness. And it talks about Yahweh is spirit manifesting within the clouds, symbolizing eternity, Jerusalem above. He is the fullness of wisdom. He is the fullness. He doesn't, he's not smart. He's wisdom itself. He is the full of knowledge. He is the fullness of intelligence, love, beauty, justice, power, foundation, strength. He is the fullness of all these things. Why should I follow you? Because I made you. And what and what people don't understand, and it was it was said in the prayer, um, you know, you know, thank you, thank you for teaching me and everything. But here's the thing. He's got a responsibility because he's going to be true to what he is. He is love. He is justice. He is power. When he makes a when he makes a law, he's going to keep that law. He has put in you philoprogenitiveness. Philoprogenitiveness means instinctive love of the parent for the offspring. It's just natural. You you. You cannot deny it. Why else would would somebody work so hard and stay up nights and go out of your way because it's in you? And, and I had a friend who his son kept getting into trouble and was going to get uh, end up going up into prison. And he said, "Man, if it wasn't for this fellow progenitiveness, I never look at that guy's face again." But he knew that he had a burning within him that he was united to this child. He's not going to leave this child. He loves this child. Even though he's gone through mistakes, he's going to be there for him. Now, I want to go back to that scripture that we were looking at. Um, uh, please read, turn or black backs, backsliding children. Jeremiah 3.14, turn O backsliding children, saith Yahweh. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Okay, so when he says, I'm going to do it, because of the divine love that he has, he is going to do it. And, and you know, I wake up every day and this... One of the first thoughts I have is he died for you. He just take, came in, Yahshua came in and died for you. And, you know, this is kind of embarrassing, but it's true. When I was a little kid, um, I, I must have been complaining to my father, who worked very hard. He was a longshoreman. You go in, it's a hot day. You're taking these things out of a refrigerated train, so you're going from hot to cold, hot to cold, back and forth all day, and then they give you a little bit of money and you go home. But my point was, he worked very hard and he said to me, I work for you. I work for you. I'm going out to this horrible job so that you can have clothes and all, you know, school and shoes and, you know, everything that you need, food, I'm, I'm taking care of you. I work for you. And, you know, as a kid, I was, my thought was, well, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay. It's kind of rude, but it's true. That is what you're supposed to do. And I'm saying in regards to your creator, that is what you're supposed to do. That's what he's supposed to do. He married you. He married Israel and that he was supposed to take care of Israel, but when you read in the book, if you be good to him, he'll be good to you. But if you are backsliding and turning your back, and if you'll read some horrendous things where you say, I'm, I'm surprised Yahweh didn't wipe them out right then. At one point, he's talking to them. He's talking to Israel, who he had taken and brought them out, out of, out of the, um, Egypt, brought them into the wilderness, and they are living um, well, they have food, they have clothing, their clothing doesn't wear out, they, they have 
to drink. He, they got bread from heaven, which is a, a type of this gospel, bread from heaven. He's, he's giving them meat. He's taking good care of them. They're being so well taken care of that they're having the next generation. And they get into a tiff with Yahweh, which that's the wrong one to pick a fight with, and say, we want to go to the promised land. We want to go back to Egypt. Now, if there ever was a time when a big fish should have come out of the sky, that was it. And he did take care of people for a long time. But I just wanted you to look at, turn, O backsliding children, saith Yahweh, I'm married unto you. There are people, there are two people who get married. And so many times you can see it's true because so many marriages don't last. One person means it. I'm going to, I'm going to love you like nobody loves you. Come rain or come shine. They mean it. And then the other one doesn't, but he meant it. I am married on you. Now what they didn't have, they didn't have the heart to do it. That's why Yahshua died for, to cast out his spirit. So now you could be one and you can appreciate. And you're not going to be saying no stupid stuff about like, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You're going to appreciate him. I will take you one of a country, one of a city, two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion and I will give you pastors. Now that's what the new covenant is all about. And I'm sorry that I'm, I'm jumping around, but there was an old covenant that was given to Israel and to Israel only. The new covenant shows forth Yahshua coming forth, going through a death, a burial, and a resurrecting, casting out this Holy Spirit on all flesh, all that would receive it. I will give you pastors according to mine heart, and I will feed you with what? Knowledge and understanding. You're going to know his ways. Now, I just want to get one more thing before I start getting right into circumcision. I want to look at um, Acts 17, 28, and I'll, I'll get it up here. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Okay, so could you pick it up again? Because I, I wouldn't, you know what? Uh, okay. Okay, let's start at 28, but this is a really good thing. Okay, thank you, please. Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. Him who? Some... Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim. When he says, let there be light, he is the light. He is. He has made this whole creation, and you're going to have to come down and learn it. After him, it's all, the whole creation is showing the unity of the Godhead. Uh, it's threefold, yet one. The atom, the cells. Everything is made up of him. It's showing forth him. We live and move every day. And I, I want to say this clearly. I'm hoping that this comes forth clearly. Every day. People don't believe that God died and, and you know, that he came back. But every day you see the sun go down. It was said by the second speaker. Below the horizon, a death burial and then early in the morning a resurrection and you see it i don't care where you live you, you even if you're on the top of the world you can see like a little glimpse of it okay you live we move we have our being in him will you okay please read from 28 Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. You are his offspring, and we can show you how there is a tabernacle pattern that shows the blueprint to how you are made exactly like him. He is threefold, you are threefold. You have a head cavity, a chest cavity, and an abdominal cavity. You are made like somebody, when I was growing up, you look like your father. Yeah, you look like your father. You are made like him. You are his offspring. Go ahead. So we've been offspring after the flesh physically. Now we want to be the offspring after the spirit. We want to be walking in wisdom, intelligence, 
knowledge. And that's what the teaching of this gospel can do. Please go, please keep going on. Verse 29, for as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the most high. So if we, if we're here as offspring, we shouldn't be looking at, wow, I'm going to get myself a $60,000 Rolex. Boy, I'm going to get me a $200,000 car. And I, and I can't even, you know, somebody, they keep showing this thing on YouTube about, you know, these gold diggers, but I think the guys are gold diggers too, because they, they looking at these women that are walking around half naked. And then when they say, well, no, thank you. And then they show them the cars like, oh, now I want to know you. Well, a Lamborghini, what good is it? It's, it's so fast, you can't even drive it on these roads. What do you need it for? You know, this girl walking around in these tiny little clothes. What do you, is that all you want from her? You know, that don't last long. So um, 29, please. For as so much both knuckleheads. So what the, the real thing that you want, wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, fruit of the spirit. Those are the things that last. Those are the things that last so long, they take you into the next age. Continue. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device can be like the most high. Why? Because it's temporary and you know how much it loses in its value. It was such a good point when you on the movie, the Titanic and this very rich man says, Hey, I'll, I'll give you everything that I have. If you'll give me that seat on, on the, um, on the, on the, the, the little ships that they had there, those little, what do you call those? Lifeboat. Those, yeah, those little, you know, I'll get everything I have. If you let me sit on a lifeboat. Well, how long am I going to be a rich man? This be. <laughs> This thing is going down. Uh, how, how much time do I have? 15 minutes? Oh, why? I'm wealthy. <laughs> glub, glub. I'm dead. All right. Keep going. And the times of this ignorance Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay, this is the point that I wanted to really, but at the times of this ignorance, you didn't know Yahweh, you weren't aware of Yahweh, but now commandeth all men and men includes, includes womb men, the men with the wombs, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. What does repent mean? You look back at what you've done and say, acknowledge as you grow what's right and what's wrong and say, oh, you know what? I was wrong about that. Uh, keep going and to repent. And then repent doesn't mean, well, wow, I was wrong and keep doing it like, oh, I'm a sinner, no to go from death to life. I don't do that anymore. And people show you all the time how they repent. It's like, oh, I, I don't eat bread. I don't eat butter. I don't do this. They do that in the flesh. Now, with the Holy Spirit, you can do it in the spirit. No, I'm not a liar. I'm not going to lie. Nope, it's not, that's not what my father does. That's not what I do. Keep going. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given proof unto all men and that he has raised him from the dead. He's given proof unto all men that he has raised him from the dead. Every time you see that sun coming up, you can see he raised him from the dead. Every time you take a seed and you put this tiny little seed into the ground, like a mustard seed, and you have this great plan come up, you see the death, a burial, a resurrection, it's proof that something raised from the dead. And when it raises from the dead, it undergoes a, a miraculous change. Continue. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. Others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Some mocked, some said, yeah, yeah, whatever. I don't care if you say, yeah, yeah, whatever. You wouldn't be able to eat if there wasn't a miraculous thing going on through a death, burial, resurrection, and so these things are coming up out of the ground that are feeding the cows and the chickens and everything else so that you can have life. So yeah, there's a resurrection from the dead, Con continue. So Saul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believe, among the which was Dionysius, the area pagite, and a woman named Damaris and others with them. So, so, so some believe, some take it and say, okay, wow, I believe this. And it's, 
he's, he was coming to them with proof and he was showing them out of the law and the prophets. The law is the first five books that are of the of the of the Bible it was given to Moses, then you got prophets from Joshua to Malachi, and then Yahshua comes in and fulfills. So it's your law, prophets, fulfilling it's all talking to you about Yahshua the Messiah. Now I just wanted to get um can we read uh uh Genesis 17 and 11. That's it. Genesis 17 and 11. <clears throat> and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Okay. Um, uh, can we, we got time. Can we read it down from one, please? Okay, Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty Elohim. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and Yahweh talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. But of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a Elohim unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their Elohim. And Elohim said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generation, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must need be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he hath broken my covenant so there was going to be a, an agreement between Yahweh and man, the sign that was going to be in the body of, of the Hebrew was going to be when you looked at the male, it's like, oh, he's circumcised. This is, these are probably possibly one of Yahweh's people and that it was going to be a covenant that was going to be kept uh, with, with show, be, kept by the, the the people of Yahweh from Abraham on down they were going to be circumcised every male is going to be circumcised what does the circumcision mean a cutting away of the unneeded flesh to show forth the head now I just want to say this and um, there's a whole lot of explanation for this but can we get Joshua 5 and 2 Joshua 5 and 2. At that time, 
Yahweh said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskin. And this, and this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. But the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war who came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh unto whom Yahweh swear that he would not show them the land which Yahweh Elohim swear unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised. But they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And Yahweh said unto Joshua, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal until this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal. And okay, I'm sorry. That's enough. I'm sorry. That was very good. Gilgal mm -hmm. means rolling. So he was, they were rolling away that foreskin. And what I want to do is if you can get it in your own book, I want to go and get the chart. And I want to read um, Je Joshua 5, 1 through 9 again. And I want to point to the chart while we read it. So, so can we do that? Sure. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, then we got what we come to understand is it talks about in the book that Joshua is the author and the finisher of our faith. And you'll find that this one over here, Joshua, his name really is Yahshua. So Yahweh comes... Yahweh comes in, has his, has this man come in. Let me put it this way. Moses at the burning bush is called to come down and that he is going to be used, he's going to be instrumental in freeing these people. Well, the reason that he says to come down is that Joshua, who is in fact Yahweh taking on a flesh taking on the flesh he is the one that's yahweh in a body his name means yahweh is salvation so when he comes down here and he says to moses certainly i will be with thee so when he says certainly i will be with thee, this is him um let me see this is him back there in the flesh he says i've i've heard their cries i've why is he saying that? Because Yahweh came into the flesh and he experienced it. He experienced it here, what Israel was going through. So he comes in again, he experienced here what Israel was going through. That's why you can call him the author, the beginning and the finisher um, right here with Yahshua the Messiah. So can you read Joshua 5? Uh, you can pick it up at 1 and we can go down, please. Joshua 5 and 1. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that Yahweh had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Okay, so what happened back here? was Yahweh took down the, one of the powerhouses of the world, Pharaoh, and caused his people who were, who were um, shepherds, um, not necessarily army people or anything, to go across on dry ground. And they would live to see their enemies, Pharaoh and his host, 
die in the Red Sea, and then he was they were taken care of here, and they were given the rules and the ordinances that Yahweh had made in order for them to become his people. Uh, keep reading, please. At that time, Yahweh said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Now we already read it all the way back with Abraham, it was gonna be a sign between Yahweh and the children of Israel. I, I want you to have this circumcision, you know, and, and it's gonna show forth a covenant. So these people down here, they had, they had been, the male children back here had been circumcised on the eighth day. Keep going. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskin. So do you understand that back here, the physical Joshua circumcised, circumcised the, the children of Israel. What is that pointing to? We're gonna be reading about a circumcision of the heart and by the preaching of the gospel, it's causing your heart to lose um, uh, anger, um, sin, uh, going against Yahweh. That nature is gonna be changed in your heart. And, the, and that unneeded flesh is going to be taken off of your heart, not your physical heart, your nature, your deportment is going to undergo a change. So can you keep reading? And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. Now, people... how, now, now, wait a moment. He said, now this is why Joshua circumcised. Keep reading. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. Now, the reason that, that they didn't make it up, this first generation is Yahweh, is because of their unbelief. Yahweh sent some a man, told them to spy out the land. They came back and said, wow, it's a great land. And Caleb and Joshua, they said, yeah, we can have it, let's go. Joshua said, we can have it, let's go. And the people said, no, it's, it's a great land, it's a wonderful land, but the people up here, and according to our own eyes, we're like grasshoppers concerned to them. We can't have it, and, and our, our children, um, you know, what will happen to our children if we go up there? So Yahweh was very angry because of after all the things that he had done, the 10 plagues down there. You don't believe me? You don't trust me? He was very angry. And he said, you know what? Because, because you didn't listen to me, this first generation, they're going to die off. And that second generation, the ones that you were so concerned about, I'm going to take care of them. And they're going to make it into my into the promised land, the land of milk and honey. So keep reading, please. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised, but the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. Mm -hmm. But the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh unto whom Yahweh swear that he would not show them the land which Yahweh swear unto their fathers, that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And the children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised, but they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And I just wanted to say so. I was talking to my friend this morning. It just, it just came to me. Yash was teaching you all the time. It was like circumcision. This isn't an assembly line thing. This is individual and personal, right? right. And so, and Yahshua circumcised the men of Israel. Well, what's that showing? Yahshua is circumcising your heart and mine individually personally, I'm a racist, I'm a knucklehead, whatever, that circumcision is going on by the preaching of the gospel, individually, personally, and can we get um, Jeremiah 4.4, 4, and then can, can we, then can we go back to uh, Joshua? Jeremiah 4 and 4, circumcise yourselves to Yahweh, and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Jer Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn, that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. 
So all the way back in the prophets, they're talking about a circumcision of a heart, a changing of a heart. And I'll see it. You see it. You try. You talk to the average person. You say the name of your Creator is Yahweh, and you breathe His name. Oh, that's what you think. Oh, that's your idea. You know, you get all that kind of stuff. And I had a personal a situation with this. So I was talking to a cousin of mine. You breathe his name. His name is important. Now, that's what you think. She went into her bedroom, turned on her television, and watched her church. And you know the name that they were singing? Hallelujah. I'll tell you. They were singing Yahweh. They were singing a song that had the name Yahweh in it. And I clapped my hands like this. My work is done. <laughs> Yahweh backs up this, this, you know, like she was saying, it's, it's, it's not Dr. McCain talking. It's not this one talking. It's not the one. He's backing it up. It's his gospel. Keep going, please. And, and Joshua, please. Eighth verse. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. See, what you got to understand that Joshua came up here and they, when they, by the time they came up here, people were afraid of them because all of the enemies, Yahweh just took them out of the way, took care of Pharaoh, took care of, of the people up here, took care of, I think it was, ended up being 33 kings had to bow, out, bow down and bow out because Yahweh took them down. So what Yahshua was going to do with the Holy Spirit and you, all of that, he's the overcomer. He's going to make all of that nonsense, take it out of your way, and you're going to be his son. Keep reading. Nine and Yahweh said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of this place is called Gilgal until this day. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, so mm -hmm. where are you? What are you reading up to? What's that? I'm on the 10th verse now. Okay, uh, all right, yeah, all right, that, all right, so that's good. Okay, so, um, can we get, um, Galatians 6 and 15. Okay. Uh, Galatians. Galatians. We'll read in the book that when Yahshua goes through his circumcision, when he's a child, his circumcision is for us all. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6 and 15, for in the Messiah, Yahshua, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So what's going to happen, so they were saying um, the Jews were given the, the, the new people who were receiving and oh, you got to be circumcised just like us. And in fact, they did take one guy and say, okay, you won't listen, you won't listen to me unless I'm circumcised. Okay, here I'm circumcised. Now when you listen to what I have to say was this talking about, it's neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. There's got to be a change in the heart. And um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down now and I'd like our next speaker to be. Dr. Frank Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Valerie. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, that's an important principle of the circumcision, and we all had to have that happen. And uh, this teaching is for, I mean, Yahweh uh, gave every man a sufficient amount of intelligence to comprehend the purpose of Yahweh and the knowledge. And uh, just to kind of go with what you was talking about there, uh, read, uh, now this is what we do in the school. Isaiah 8 and 20 says to the law and the testimony, they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. And the previous speaker is just talking about the carnal ordinances. And in Hebrews 9 and 10, it says, uh, uh, that the law stood only in meats, drinks, and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. It was imposed on the Israelites, and they were physical things to worship the Creator that the Creator gave them to do, and they couldn't keep it. And that's why you have a prophecy in Jeremiah 31, 31. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh 
So Yahweh speaking that there's going to be some days coming that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. So that as was talked about marriage and so on, well, the Moses chart, uh, he said he's going to make a new covenant, not like the old one. Well, that's why we go back to the old one. They had a Passover feast in Exodus, the 12th chapter. That's what the church is called the Lord's Supper today. But it was a feast that they had. They had roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. It was done in a house. It was never done in a church. It was done at night. They do it in the morning. Um, it was a feast. They're eating crackers and grape juice. That's not a feast. You understand? Then Exodus, the 14th chapter, that's the baptism with a group of people. That's them going through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And you didn't, most people don't know that's a baptism, but in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that rock that led them, and that rock was the Messiah. See, it said the Messiah was back there. It's King James Version will say Christ was back there. Well, that's a great mystery. Uh, um, okay, and then when they went through the Red Sea, they sang songs, Exodus 15, because they're happy that Yahweh delivered them out of the land of Egypt, and they don't have Pharaoh and his host having them in bondage anymore. Then Exodus 16 is the Sabbath day given. See, Exodus 20 is the Ten Commandment law. Then you read about tithes and offerings back there. See, and so, uh, and sacrifices offered up. And so all that, he said he's going to make a new covenant, not like the old one. So if you've got tithes under the old one, it can't be under the new one. If you had circumcision under the old one, you can't have circumcision under the new one. Uh, if you had baptism under the old one, you can't have baptism under the new one. Well, but the thing is, it's now converted in the spirit. See, like the previous speaker was talking about, uh, get Deuteronomy 10, 16 and uh, 30 and 6. Uh, this is the continue with the circumcision. And so really what happened is we're, we, we, we came into school and you've got a lot of flesh in your mind. And uh, the Holy Spirit's going to cut it out. It's, in other words, it's going to cut out the false doctrine that you've been taught all your life in trying to worship a spirit creator by doing physical things. Uh, you have Deuteronomy 10, 16. Deuteronomy 10, 16. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Now, when you circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Stiff-necked means you can't turn away. You can't turn your head. You understand? Well, you need to turn and see the Holy Spirit in operation. You need to turn and see spirit things, because you're physical-minded. Okay, uh, and, and that's what he was saying about that. They wouldn't turn and do the things he told them to do. OK, you, and so you have to circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. OK, that's the flesh of your heart. Uh, that's not uh, the physical one given to for the males. OK, you got uh, 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 30 and 6. Deuteronomy 30 and 6. And Yahweh thy Elohim will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thine heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. So you see who has to circumcise you? He has to circumcise your heart. That means that there's something wrong. You're, you're carnal minded and it needs to be cut out so that you can uh, love Yahweh with all your heart, all your might and all your soul. Okay. Um, you got uh, read uh, uh, Jeremiah 4 and 4, which I think she I don't know if she had it read, but I know she called it. Jeremiah 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. Circumcise their, yourselves to Yahweh and take away the foreskins of your heart. 
ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doing. Okay, and then 923. Well, what does 6 and 10 say? Jeremiah 6 and 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hear. Hearken. So, so their ear is uncircumcised. In other words, uh, uh, they haven't. All they can hear is the flesh. They haven't heard about the spirit, so they need to be circumcised so they can hear and do what Yahweh says. Okay, you got nine twenty three. Jeremiah nine twenty three. Thus saith Yahweh. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now you see what physical people glory in? The wise man said, look how wise I am. Mighty man, they, I'm a senator, I'm a representative. You understand, won't give it up and they're 90 years old. Doesn't even make any sense. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. They glory in their riches, don't they? <laughs> drive around hundred thousand dollar cars and stuff like that that stuff's crazy uh live in million dollar mansion they glory in their riches see but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that's what you should be glorying in mm -hmm. and that i am yahweh which exercise loving kindness judgment and righteousness in the earth for these things i delight saith yahweh Mm -hmm. Behold, days come, saith Yahweh, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uh, uncircumcision. So whether you're physical circumcised or uncircumcised, he's going to punish them. And he talks about all those nations, Egypt and all them other ones and Judah. That's Israel and uh, 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 it says uncircumcised in heart there. Then it says that all these nations are 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 uncircumcised. In the heart, even though Israel was circumcised physically, they were uncircumcised. Oh, you know, it says, no, I'm uh, the last of the King James says, for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. They were circumcised physically, but they wasn't circumcised spiritually. OK, so when Yahshua Messiah comes in, we talk about him fulfilling. So. The circumcision was given on the eighth day. So mm -hmm. um, in in Luke two twenty one, it says, and and when the eight, uh, read it. Now when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Yahshua, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So see, he was circumcised physically on that eighth day to fulfill it. Now that's the Creator in a body. When he's circumcised. It's done. No more circumcised from a physical standpoint because it was testifying of him. He said, the scriptures testify of me. Then get the chart. Uh, he's on the cross. When he's on the cross, he dies on a Friday. That's the sixth day of the week. He's buried all that Sabbath when he dies. <laughs> and they bury him in the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Then he resurrects. Or early Sunday, that would be like the eighth day. That's a circumcision of the flesh. He's no more in a fleshly body. Get Romans 2.28. Romans 2.28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of Yahweh. So you see what the circumcision is? Mm -hmm. And so when you read Galatians 5 and 17 and 19, you have the works of the flesh. But then after that flesh is cut away, then you have the fruit of the spirit and there's nine through the spirit and to see that in john 4 23 yashua messiah said uh the hour coming uh, 
the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. For Yahweh is spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. See, if you're doing the physical things, you're paying money. You're not paying. You're not. You're not. Uh, well, see, Yahshua Messiah uh, uh, paid the price in full with his blood. So if he paid it in full, what are you doing giving money to be saved? If you, you know, in other words, you can't do physical things to worship a spirit creator. So in Jeremiah 31, 31, he said, behold, the days come dispensation ages. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant. So he's talking about them under the Old Testament. Uh, that's where he gave them the law. He's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel, house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with our fathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt with my covenant break as a husband of the saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant I will make with them after those days. I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. The New Testament is written in the heart and mind. It's not written in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or the rest of the Bible you call the New Testament. Uh, he said in, um, uh, well, in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 3 and 2, it says, you are our epistles known and read of all men. And that, and that the Messiah, it's not written with ink no more, but with the, by the spirit of the living Elohim. And it's in your heart and mind. And so that's why there were two tables of stone. First, tables that were broken and then the second tables was put in the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant represent uh, was put in the most holy place of the tabernacle that's representing your head how that he's writing these things in your heart and mind when you come and down and hear this great gospel mm -hmm. so he has to circumcise the the former things the lies you've been told all your life and then you can receive the holy spirit and have your soul saved and that's what this school does. It tells, you know, there's just so much to talk about. And, and, uh, but, and you can, each time you come, you're going to learn something more and more. And you see how these ministers have been raised up. Uh, so this teaching is for the entire world. It's just that some people, some souls might reject it when it, or many rejects it because them satanic spirits try to have people, uh, not see and understand this. So, uh, uh, we're, uh, uh, you give praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, your Elohim, if you ever learn anything. And uh, you can ask questions. And uh, please come back, because that's how we learn our own selves about these things. Uh, and you can have eternal life. He gave you your physical body, and what's coming up is giving you an immortal, glorified body. And you can be one of his angels, giving him praise throughout all eternity. So uh, all praise go to Yahweh, unto his son, Yahshua Messiah, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank everyone. Okay, we're uh we can stay after class if there are any questions for the new person. We'll wait after class and you can ask your questions. We thank everyone for their participation. Uh sorry. <laughs> for everyone for coming out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. We also have a Jamaica class on Sundays at 7 p.m. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Beautiful class. That's the new, uh, uh, I forget her name. I do humbly apologize. Sherry. 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 